Right then, let's go. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about our game against Southampton on Saturday. You know what this video is. It's going to be my predicted 11 for that game against Southampton. After the frustrations of Middlesbrough, compounded by the frustrations against Burnley, what will Ralph Ragnick change in this game? Will we see Harry Maguire dropped after a week where some uh, really quite vociferous anger and frustration went directly towards Harry Maguire? Not off the back of one bad performance, but off the back of a that's a very bad season, let's be completely honest. I'll run through all of that. I'll run through each position and explain my choices. Before I do begin, please, if you would consider, ladies and gents, it's free. Go down there, hit that subscribe button. Genuinely, it does help the channel. Hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Boom, you get a link, a ping every time I go live. And why would you want to miss anything? It's top tier content sometimes, occasionally. Half the time. I'll give myself half of it. But look, let's get straight into this one. And let's get straight into talking about defence. Where, of course, the big discussion and talking point is Harry Maguire. Will he be dropped by Ralph Ragnick? I think he will be. This is my back five there. And you will see that the only change is, of course, Harry Maguire going out for Victor Lindelof. Now, the only thing we know about our defensive options at the moment, I'm sure it might change uh, once uh, Ralph speaks to the press, I think about half past one on Friday. We know full well that Eric Bailly has got a, still got a bit of a niggle with his ankle. So he's not going to be fit to play. Now, Victor Lindelof, um, he was given time off, remember, because his house got broken into. Uh, he was given time off to be with his family. And then he suffered from an illness for a week. Was it, was it COVID? I'm not sure whether it was COVID or not, but he was ill. But right now, if he's fit and he's ready, he comes straight back in that team to partner who we can only describe as Champions League Varane. This man right now is... And this is why I did that video this week on Harry Maguire. I've sort of... I tend not to... I don't really like throwing players under the bus. I swear on my life I don't. I don't thrive on negativity. I'm, I'm a positive person. I want to be positive about United. But if there's a key problem, I'm going to point it out. I'm not going to be blissfully ignorant and ignore what I'm watching. Harry Maguire's performances, alongside Rafael Varane, Varane set the level for what we should expect of a centre-back at Manchester United. Hell, that guy there, he set the levels of what we should expect as Man at Manchester United. And Rafael Varane right now, he's looking absolutely mustard. Deserved that goal, scratched off for offside. We're not going to get into that debate again. But that is a centre-back partnership I want to see against Southampton's side. I'm not sure if you watched that game against Spurs this week. They were dead and buried. Couple of late goals, they came back. Good character, good football. Hassan Hootel has built a decent team there. Now, the last time that they came to Old Trafford, do you remember what the score was? 9-0. They lost 9-0 to us. I don't think that's going to be happening on Saturday. That's for sure. But that's the back five I would go for. De Gea, there's no questions. You can ask whether or not uh, he should have come off his line faster for the Burnley equaliser. De Gea will never come off his line that fast. That's just not his start of play. It's not how, he, it's not how he's a goalkeeper. He's a shot stopper. He stays kind of planted on the line. And I'd definitely keep the low and sure. Tedders is back in training. He all played very well, I thought, in the first half against um, Burnley. And I think he'll keep his place in his team. And Delo, I, th I, I thought he played pretty well for the majority, but his crosses really let him down against Burnley. He needs to improve that end product because his overall game, his positioning, his, his pressing, his passing. Delo's improved so many in so many ways and defensively too. But he needs to improve with that final ball. And Shaw does as well, because we need them firing into Ronaldo. So that's what I'm going to go for my back five. And of course, we're going to move on to the midfield next. And for the first time in a long time, genuinely, I don't think there's too many questions we need to ask about midfield. But before I do, please watch it. You know what time it is. It's time for me to big up one football who are supporting United People's TV and have been one of the biggest supporters of United People's TV over the years. This is me saying, please go and download the app. There is a link in the description. It's free. It literally is a one-stop shop app. Go on there for all the latest Manchester United news, transfer news, all the build-up to the game, as well as this video, of course. Uh, but yeah, make sure you head over there, follow the link in the description, do me a favour, help United People's TV out by helping out one football. Everybody wins. But let's get back and let's talk about the midfield. Quickly got changed back out of that red. To anyway, back in the black jacket. Let's go. Let's talk about the midfield. But as I said, big up to one football. And as I said, for the first time in a long time, I genuinely don't think there's a real question mark over who starts in midfield for Manchester United. When was the last time we said that? It's got to be McTominay. It's got to be Popper. And it's got to be Bruno. And I tell you what, Scott is growing inside that role. He's being allowed to learn on the job because we have no alternative. He will not be the starting number six for Manchester United next season after we sign a number six. But right now, 
Scott McTominay is plugging a hole inside that squad that we have, and he's doing a decent job of it. He's not doing a great job of it, but he's doing a better job of it than anybody else inside that squad could do. And McTominay is helping the team because of it. So big up to Scott for doing that. Uh, I won't say too much more on that situation, but he is allowing Pogba and Bruno to really operate how they want to operate. What you've probably seen out of the two is you've probably seen Pogba dropping a little bit deeper, sometimes playing alongside and in line with McTominay and kind of allowing Bruno to operate a little bit more like that. So sometimes the 4-3-3 can line up like that. But on paper, really, I think that's what you want. You want one holding number six with two number eights. But I'd say it's a little bit fluid. Pogba and Bruno, they both switch sides. They're not specifically stuck to that side. They've been playing well. Pogba has been playing well. Great goal against Burnley, by the way. Great goal. He's been excellent since his return. And I said this about Pogba. I've said it for, for a long time now. I'm sort of done with the circus of Paul Pogba. But if he, between now and the end of the season, can put in the sorts of performances he's putting in right now, and we become a better team because of it, even if he's going to leave in the summer, I want him to be in that starting 11 because we'll be a better team between now and the end of the season because Pogba is in it. Now, Bruno, again, I would probably give him the captain's armband. I think he's a captain without the armband in terms of how he plays and the attitude that he brings to the team. I think Bruno's been really effective as well. I think both of them have been very, very effective inside this system because it allows those two to operate there. And Scott just basically just focus on sweeping up here. You don't have to run forward that much. Just win the ball back there as much as possible. Get the ball to Pogba or Bruno. Let them do the work instead of McTominay. And I think this is working well. And hell, the fact that we've created 70 shots in the last three games, it goes to show it's working well. And if I'm going to go to the attack, that's why I'm not making any changes up here either. I've gone Rashford on the left. I've gone Sancho on the right. And I've gone Ronaldo up front. This team in the last three games, it blows my mind to say this, that it really does. We've created 70 shots, 7-0. And we scored three goals. On the one hand, that's an incredible amount of creativity. That goes down to what we're saying here. You've got Bruno and Pogba there. They're working very well. We play, when, when you watch Manchester United on the break right now, we're playing with real pace. And I'll tell you who's really flourishing right now. Jaden Sancho, man. That performance against Burnley, I think, was the sort of performance that we all expected to see from Jaden straight away. Electric, confident, nutmegging, dribbling past players, taking players on. Hell yeah, more of that from Sancho. And one thing that I think we've seen from United is I might have Sancho down on the right here and Rashford on the left, but we're seeing a lot of switching. We're seeing Rashford sometimes going out on the right and Sancho going out on the left. By the way, he should never ever be anywhere near the right wing. It just doesn't work. His goal contribution was that pass down to Shaw when he crossed it into um, Pogba for the goal against uh, Burnley. And that was because Rashford was out on the left. Rashford is a much more impactful player out on the left-hand side. It's always been the case. But I don't really know why they're switching that much. But I suppose it brings an air of unpredictability to United's attack. And I don't think unpredictability is ever a bad thing when it comes to attacking. And you're damn right I'm going to be starting Ronaldo. Now, Cavani came in against Burnley. His movement was good. Okay, yeah, cool. But Cavani didn't do anywhere near enough to keep Ronaldo out of this, ta this team to, place, to face sorry, Southampton, in my opinion. And that header, how did he miss that header from two yards? I really have no idea. But the fact of the matter here is this. That 11 there, there's only one change. And that's Harry Maguire being dropped for Lindelof. If Lindelof is fit and available, Lindelof comes into that team. Ralph Rannick has to send a message with this game. Maguire cannot be allowed to be just stay in that team simply because of the captain, in the same way that Ronaldo wasn't kept in the team against Burnley because he's been out of form. Although he had played 120 minutes against Borough, so maybe it was that too. But he has to send a message. If you're playing out of form, you're going to be dropped. You're going to be replaced. And Lindelof has to come in here. But for the rest of the team, I don't think we need to change much. What we need to change is up there. It's not in terms of the 11. What we need to change is up there. We need to get better at finishing. That The two changes that we need here against Southampton are more clinical and actually understanding how to approach a football game in the second half. Schoolboy, uh, how bad our in-game management is. You can have a go uh, at the manager for that, but it comes down to the players. It comes down to the fact that we don't have a midfielder here. Any of those three, they're not really the sort of midfielder that can just receive the ball in this area and just keep recycling it. It's what Carrick did so well. That, that's why we always move between the transitions so fast. We play it from front to back because there's no one you can really rely on to confidently just stroke it around for a while, waste a minute or two just in possession, calm the game down, take the sting out. We need to get better at that. We need to basically learn how to do that. But I wouldn't change too much from the game against Burnley. 
Hell, if we did what we did against Burnley and we get our finishing right, we're going to be 2 3 up before half time, man. At some point, the penny has to drop, right? At some point, the goals have to come flooding in. And I hope it comes against Southampton. Hell, why not? Maybe we'll be 9 0 again. Fingers crossed. What's your prediction for the game? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you did enjoy the video, as I said at the start of it, please would you consider going down to the bottom of the video, hitting that subscribe button, hitting that notification bell as well, getting a ping every time I go live. But for everybody who's already subscribed, big up to you. You're part of the community. See you soon, and I'll speak to you after the game tomorrow against Southampton, hopefully after three points, please.